families, my name is Holly Compton and I'm the district math coach for Manhattan Beach and grades TK to 6. And this week we are going to do a regular subtraction problem. So as the weeks go, we circle back and forth between different problem types. So we try to keep them moving through all of the problem types through the entire school year. So here we are. We are back to what is called a separate result unknown problem type. And that just means you're going to get the answer right here. So the first thing I'm going to do with your child is a number talk. And this is all mental math, remember? So the first question I will ask is 20 minus 8. So I'll give your kids time to think. And then um, they may think about 10 minus 8 is 2. And then they would have had 10 left. So they may separate the 20 out into two different 10s like this in their minds. 10 and 10 is 20. And then some kids may do this first. Um, 10 minus 8 equals 2. And then they have 10 left. So they do 10 plus 2 is 12. So they know the answer is 12. Very different from the way we learned it, right? But they're using skills in their head mentally to figure out these solutions. Another thing they might do is use math tools in their minds, right? Um, these are so important, and we use these all year long, so they are familiar with these. They can imagine them in their head. So 20 minus, some kids will say, I know 8 plus 2 makes 10, so they'll just pop off 2, and then they'll say 20 minus 8 equals 12. That's another way to do it. Um, another way, of course, is a number line. Number lines are hugely important. Um, so if you haven't made a number line with your child, think about making a number line. Um, you can go from 0 to 30. I have a 0 to 31 up here. Um, you can go to 0 to 50, whatever you think would help your kid. Um, so in this case, if they're going to use a number line, um, they'll start over here on the right because we're going to be subtracting. So you're going to move to the left. Because, of course, in a number line, the numbers increase in value going to the right. So 20 would be the starting number minus 8. Now, some kids may hop um, back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's fine. Let them do that if that's what their strategy is. It's okay. Um, some kids may say, oh, um, I'll take off 10. 20 minus 10 is 10. And then they said, well, I know, really, I only had to take off 8. So I'll add 2 back on, and that will land me at 12. There's all kinds of different ways they may approach this. The next thing I'm going to ask your child is 30 minus 18. And um, I would expect to see similar strategies across the board. So maybe they'll uh, separate the 30 into a 10. 10, 10. This is called unitizing. Unitizing is really, really important that they know how to make units of 10, right? Uh, so maybe they'll do that, or maybe they'll simply do a number line. So again, starting on this side, the very right side, they're going to write 30, and they're going to take off 18. So my guess is many children would do 30 minus 10 first and get 20, and then either hop back those eight, or maybe take a hop of five. This is my guess for most kids will probably take a hop of five and get to 15, and then most kids will probably say, I need three more left. One, two, three. Each one of those is minus one. So 15 minus one is 14, 13, 12. And our answer is right here. And we know that because we started at 30 and we took off 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. So all together we took off 18 and we landed at 12. All right, so those are a couple of ways your kids may approach it. And then we're going to go into the story problem about dolphins. So Darcy was at the beach with her family. They saw 20 dolphins in the water. Then 11 dolphins swam away. So remember, we are not telling our children, this is a subtraction problem. Here's what to do. 
they can imagine this in their minds. They can make a story in their minds or a picture, excuse me, in their minds. So they saw 20. They can imagine that. Um, then they can imagine dolphins swimming away. That's the act of removal. So they know to take off. So they know that that's subtraction. How many dolphins were still there? And then they'll have a choice between 20 and 11. 60 and 21, 120 and 61. Um, you've probably noticed that these are both, or all three of these are multiples of 10, so 20, 60, and 120. And then we're working to take off a number that has a one in the ones place. So it's increasing in difficulty with numbers, but we are now in um, subtraction with the result unknown, which is a little bit of an easier problem type. But Make sure you are listening to your child explain their strategies and um, make sure you have math tools when they need them. They probably do need them. All right, it's time to go get those kids. See you back here in just a second. Hi kids, it's Mrs. Compton and Chip. He's come back because he's had some special requests to do more videos with Chip. So here we are. We are ready for our number talk. Chip, no yawning during math. Please. Okay. We're going to start off with our number talk, which is all mental math. And I want you to try to see what your best strategy would be to solve this. 20 minus 8. Shit. Yawning through math today. All right. Everybody hit pause and solve 20 minus 8. All right, kids, on the count of three, tell me what you got for 20 minus eight. One, two, three, tell me. I heard you. I can hear you all the way from here. I heard 20 minus eight equals, what'd you say? 12? Yeah. Oh, oh. Did you hear 12? Yeah, I think he heard you. Do you see him? Ah! Okay, so 20 minus eight equals 12. Let's see if we can prove it. I'm gonna guess your strategy. Here we go. Hmm, I'm gonna think that maybe some of you thought about doing this on a number line. So when we're subtracting, we have to make sure that our numbers still make sense on the number line. So we know that if this were zero and this were five, it's a zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? Not five, four, three, two, one. So we know we have to start with a 20 on the right side of the number line. Right, Chip? Yeah. Okay, and then I'm gonna guess that some of you probably thought about taking off eight, and I'm gonna guess your strategy. So I'm gonna guess that maybe some of you thought of eight as three plus five. Kind of like a number bond, right? So then maybe you did 20 minus 5 in one hop. 20 minus 5. And 20 minus 5, I bet you know, is 15. Okay, so we took off the 5. And then we had how many left to take off from that 8? That 3. I'm going to guess you may have done that. So maybe minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Each one of those is minus one. So 15, 14, 13, 12. And that was the answer, 12. I'm gonna guess that maybe some of you did that that way, and maybe some of you took hops of one. So inside this five, maybe you did one, two, three, four, five. So each of those would be little hops of one. What's your sister saying? Surprise, I have two dogs. Speckles is outside barking. Can you hear her? <laughs> All right. So maybe you did that, or maybe you thought about these. Maybe you thought to yourself, 20 minus 8, well, I could just take off eight green ones. So maybe you just did that, took off eight green, and you know that you would have 12 left. All right. Chip, are you still doing math in your head? 
Are you doing that mental math? Don't you dare yawn. Oh. Okay, you ready for your next one? Here it comes. Thirty minus eighteen. All right, everybody, hit pause and solve thirty minus eighteen in your head. Unpause when you're ready. Okay. All right, on the count of three, everybody, tell me thirty minus eighteen. One, two, three. Tell me. Did you did you yell at me that it's actually the same answer? Did you did, huh? I heard you. So you said it's going to be 12 again. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Can you figure out why it's 12 again? That's weird because we have different numbers. We have 20 minus 8 there and 30 minus 18 here. Why do we both, why, why are both answers 12? That's kind of weird. Can you figure it out? All right, let's see here. Chip? Okay, I think you need to go take a nap. Jeez. Okay, 30 minus 18 <laughs> equals 12. So maybe you thought about um, these guys. Thought about 30. And maybe you thought I could take off 10 and 8 more. And you'd be left with 12. Maybe you thought about it like that, or maybe, hmm, let's see, maybe you thought about it as 30 minus 10 is 20, and let's see, so, so far I've taken off 10. Maybe then you did the 5 next and saved the 3 for last, kind of like last time. Okay, so we took off 10. And let's take off five now. So 20 minus five is 15. Okay, took that one off. And then I'm gonna take off three. One, two, three. So minus one, minus one, minus one. 15, 14, woo, 13 and 12. There it is, so our answer is 12. All right, you guys, are you ready to see this story? It's my favorite time because we get to say hello to somebody. All right, so you guys, today I thought we have to say hello to this person because they keep writing to me in the comments. Yay! Okay, so are you ready? We are going to say hello to Mrs. Walsh's class today. Hi, Mrs. Walsh's class at Robinson. And today, guess who's in my story? Darcy! Hi, Darcy. You keep writing to me. Thank you. I love all of your messages. Okay, so this story is all about dolphins. Can you imagine the dolphins swimming in the ocean? I know. I love going on boat rides and seeing dolphins. All right, so Darcy was at the beach with her family. They saw hmm, dolphins in the water. Okay, everybody imagine yourself. Maybe you're on the beach. Maybe you're in a boat and you see dolphins. Then... Hmm, dolphins swam away. Okay, so you were watching the dolphins, and then some dolphins swam away. How many dolphins were still there? Okay, so how many dolphins um, were still there that Darcy's family was able to look at and see? All right, let's check out our just right number sets. Here we go. We're going to try it out with 20 and 11. So Darcy was at the beach with her family. They saw 20 dolphins. Ooh, that's a nice sized pod. They saw 20 dolphins in the water. Then 11 dolphins swam away. All right, so imagine 20 dolphins and then 11 dolphins swimming away. How many dolphins were still there? All right, kids, we have to choose our just right number set. Now remember, you want to focus on having a really good solid strategy before you go on to the hardest number sets, right? So this strategy set right here is for first grade, and that really helps us develop our strategies, the way we're solving. And if you feel like, hey, I have a really good strategy here, then you can move on. All right, it's up to you now. 
Go check in with your teacher and see how you should turn this in. See you next time.